taken care of. And, and certainly any restraining order which would hinder or put a roadblock in that, uh, in that way would be irresponsible. I could keep the job, perhaps, but I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't be effective. The only reason I've stayed through these last two weeks is uh, these charges that have been made under the table and in political circles, which are no more than a rehash of the April election. I wanted them out in the open. And, and I'm, I'm really tired of this political fun and games they play in Farmer's Branch. If anybody has anything to say, I want them to come in here and lay it on the table. It's uh, just as simple as that. And uh, I was concerned that if I walked off the job, which would have been the easy thing to do, I would not get a chance to answer any of this blackmail charges. And I would not have a chance to continue to hold the staff together. Robert Wayne Lawson was 13 and loved to fish and he had been fishing Sunday at Mountain Creek Lake near here. Afterward, he rode his bike home along this narrow road. Later, a motorist found his crumpled bike beside West Keith Road here. The boy, as yet, has not been found. Well, I knew that something was wrong because I kept going back out there looking for him when the storm started to come, and I went to get him so that it wouldn't get rained on, and I couldn't find him, and I went back out there three times, and then I finally called the police, and I didn't know that they had found his bike, and I went back out there to see if the police were out there, and when I got there, they told me then that they found his bike about 6 o'clock yesterday. And at the time, they didn't know anything was wrong, and they just gathered it all up and took it into the police station. The search continues in one of the most mysterious missing persons cases in Dallas police annals. This is Tommy Ayers reporting for Channel 8 News. Much of the difficulty, if you want to call it that, is merely asking us to go uh, to the counseling room or an out-of-the-way place. Naturally, we would like to be in the student union. We want to be visible. And we have been asked on a great many campuses and by the administration to go to the counseling room or to some place that we consider out of the way. As far as uh, actual physical harassment, we have only had two or three cases of that. And of course, the administration of the college tried to stop it, and as a matter of fact, later we came back to the same campuses without trouble. This was obviously a planned thing, there's no question about that. To tell you the truth, we uh, rely on what we have found to be the good common sense of uh, naval officers and uh, naval men, and they've handled the situation quite well. We have had only one real physical confrontation where they carried a, an officer uh, out, and. Uh, our people, we've been very proud of them, uh, have handled the situation we thought was uh, calmly, with good judgment, and we have not had uh, definite instructions uh, because we felt that they do have good common sense.
The 1,100 city officials, architects, and planners here in Austin for the Governor's Conference on Urban and Community Affairs are split on the problems of cities that they're trying to solve. Architects tend to think 20, 30 years in the future. But city officials, as Governor Preston Smith said this morning in his keynote address, are unable to plan for the future. Authorities, said the governor, are too busy working today to catch up with yesterday. Meanwhile, the architects who called this meeting and are trying to convince the city officials that they should plan farther into the future are looking 20, 30, even 40 years ahead. New York management consultant Carl Morse objects to what the architects are doing. He calls it frills. In their design, they have not related the cost of the proposed design to the ability of the user to pay. They sometimes design a structure far beyond that which the owner has in mind, either by material usages or having forms and shapes that just don't work. How close are we to the point where uh, cities or large corporations perhaps might refuse to uh, to hire an architect who does this sort of thing. Well, large corporations today are beginning to think in terms of disciplining their structures the way they discipline their own business operations. Everyone is to know what they have in mind to spend, and everybody is to direct their thinking and their design to conform to the money that's available. Conferences such as this one in Austin are historically less than ideal. Architects demand beauty in buildings. Authorities ask, where do we get the money? As they sit across from each other today and tomorrow, they may go a little way towards solving their major differences. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News in Austin. Definitely. Um, small businesses in general are having trouble survive, surviving. And I think this results from the peculiar nature of the economic setting in America. You know, there's a, a great concentration on on mass production, on on uh, large scale undertakings, economies of scale. So the general, you know, success pattern for for small businesses is not a very encouraging one. And then there are problems associated particularly with, with black businesses. This is the lack of of experience in dealing with traditional institutions that relate to businesses like banking institutions and the management and counseling firms would, would also, you know, not be very, uh, very much help in ensuring the success of uh, black businesses.